With us now are Larry and Paul, and they are the owners of Salpino. Hello, welcome to both of you. How are you? Thank you, thank you. Good, how are you? Good, thank you for having us. Good. So I noticed the shirts. It says 1980. Five. Mm -hmm. 1985. I remember what I was doing in 1985. I was in high school uh, cheerleading. Uh, probably, you know, it was probably like around homecoming. Uh, we were the Hawks, you know, go Hawks. And uh, so in 1985, uh, your dad kind of started uh, Salpino. Yep. Back in that time. Okay. So tell us what is the secret to your success as a family ran business? Um, I mean, it's definitely long hours. Okay. Long hours and hard work. I would say, are the recipe for success. And so you were a former police officer. Yes. And uh, now you have also joined, and you've been working there, though. At, at one point, you worked there when you were like 16 years old. Yes. What was your first job there? I was just a deli clerk at the time. OK. Any um, interesting orders back then? Anything that you remember, any favorite customers that would come in like every single day for a certain thing? Um, we just have basic customers that would come in for specific sandwiches that would want like only me to help him or pull to help them. <laughs> and, <that's... laughs> and I think that's the joy of um, when you have a restaurant like that where people know your name and people come in and it's repeat guests day after day. Yeah, definitely create like a relationship with your customers. Now, I know Will, who's one of our camera people, um, he even said he goes there like every other day, <laughs> right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have a couple of locations here in Long Island. Where are they? Uh, one is in Wantaw on Merrick okay. Road, and the other is North Babylon on Deer okay. Park Avenue. So if one restaurant runs out of something, like an ingredient, do you like make an emergency run with tomatoes? Yeah, that's usually Larry's That's job. my job. That's I'm your job. Back, I'm the runner. <laughs> He's the Thank new one in, so we make him run back and forth for us. I love that. Are the recipes um, something that had been handed down over the years? Like, Because I've had your food, and it was really mm -hmm. good. You recently catered something that was right, phenomenal, right. a graduation party for um, our VP, mm -hmm. uh, Jenna. And the food was just like, mmm, so tasty. Thank you. So thank you. where are those recipes coming from? Um, I would honestly, they're, they're tweaked more often than not. So we kind of make sure that everything is maintained with high quality ingredients. A lot of uh, TLC goes into it. But yeah, for the most part, they're passed down through generations. Favorite things for you on the menu? The skirt steak. The skirt steak. The skirt that steak. is, yeah, that was really tasty. Yeah, I would say so. that. Or the stuffed flounder is very good. Grilled salmon, those are probably my favorites. For someone that's watching the show today and they might want to start their own restaurant, what tips could you give them? What what advice as a business owner? Mm, it's not easy. Okay. Definitely not easy. Um, I know I've missed out on a lot of events because I was working, so it's definitely a lot of hard work goes into it. Be prepared to miss, miss out on events, but it's worth it in the end. And for you? A lot of time, a lot of planning, being organized, and then just following the lead of Paul, which I do often, and his father, Pino. And, and freshness matters. So are some of the um, items like locally sourced for you? Like um, some of the farms on Long Island yeah, and the New York the area? During okay. the summertime, we do a lot of locally sourced out east, um, a lot from the tri-state area, New Jersey, uh, Maryland, a lot of things come from. Right now we have watermelon from Maryland. Oh, um, nice. Our corn comes from Long Island farmers. So in the summertime, it gets nice to do a lot of locally sourced, uh, locally sourced things that we have. So you're doing catering. Um, life has been good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you were going to uh, cater an event for for your own uh, offspring, uh, what is like some of the go-to items? You had mentioned the skirt steak and flounder uh, and penne alla vodka, the vodka oh. sauces. <laughs> vodka sauce is very good. That is very very good. Yep. Yeah, that is really good. The chicken franchise is also. A go-to for a lot of our customers as well. That's a good one too. Frances, Marsala, all those things. And how often should somebody um, call you in advance? Like, uh, you know, what's the protocol? Uh, this summer particularly has been very, very busy. So I would say at least a week to ten days. Okay. Beforehand. That's because all the weddings and the communions and all the events for for the whole entire year all of a sudden got yeah whoosh, yep. they didn't get canceled they just they got, got rescheduled back. rescheduled right <laughs> without a doubt this has been one of the busiest summers on record for us so well it's congratulations been, to you, you, you and you. to your family and uh continued success uh, for you. you and i just wanted to highlight you because like i had mentioned uh, many times on my show my grandfather was a chef <laughs> and awesome. so he, I loved his polenta. That was for mm -hmm. me like his, my his favorite uh, go-to thing. And he made um, chicken cacciatore, but I always thought it was named kitchen 
cacciatore. <laughs> I didn't know it was chicken cacciatore until I got to be an adult here in Long Island and somebody had like a chicken cacciatore on the menu and I was like, I thought it was kitchen. I don't know why I thought it was kitchen cacciatore, but it's what I always called it. Anyway, it was a delight to have you both here. Thank Continued you, success you. to both of you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. If you have a family and you want to start a business, like uh, they said, it's not the easiest thing to do, but I'm sure the rewards are great and the food's good.